over the past two years, <clears throat> two or three years, we have accumulated a fairly sizable amount of equipment, both hardware and software. So the purpose of this video is to uh, educate staff, any person coming on board, um, in the use of the variety of equipment at their disposal. We'll break the instruction down into basically two um, areas, the hardware area and the software area. And um, what we're doing here is I've made a few notes. Normally <coughs> for Studio Tech Productions, we would do a, a teleprompter session, but because of the non necessity to, to, to use a script um, and the fact and the way how the teleprompter works is not really suited for the point type display which is required for this type of presentation. So let's let's sort of get right down into it. I'll I'll refer to a couple of things on the the fact sheet or the point sheet so that we, we try to get everything in view is it's, it's quite a bit but uh, hopefully we'll be able to manage um, a fair description of the items and their use we'll start off with the hardware section the hardware section is the foundation of the hardware section are the actual cameras Filmstream uses two cameras, both in the Canon range, the T6i, digital single lens reflex, and the new XC10 video camera. A bit about the equipment here. Uh, equipment should not be exposed to extremes of temperature, hot or cold. They should not be exposed to uh, dusty conditions, drops or shock of any type um, so I'll spray of stuff so you have to be careful when you're taking uh, shoots in a marine environment and for that we, we would prefer to use the action type camera the GoPros or some of the other action cameras that we have in stock should one have to transition between a cold environment and a hot environment as, as you know that will cause condensation on the inner workings of the cameras specifically the lenses and the sensor so what you will be required to do is to allow the camera to acclimatize to its new environment and its new temperature so that all the condensation can evaporate this removes any possibility of a problem with the camera or compromising of the quality of the film or footage being taken. In terms of the environment and the type of clothing of your subjects, I recommend that the XC10, which is the full movie camera, be used um, for interview type situations, um, press conferences, this kind of stuff or any situation where you do not control the garments of the subjects because the T6i will have a problem if someone wears a striped clothing you get um, this wobbly effect on the film whereas if you use the XC10 with the larger sensor it's not a full size full frame sensor but it's a larger sensor and it does has the zebra compensation built in so that you don't get that wobbly effect uh, for persons who wear striped clothing or um, some of the some of the colors that put the normal camera technology in a spot of trouble the other the other issue is that the T6 I which is a single lens reflex camera will only shoot movie footage for 30 minutes at which time it will shut down the workaround for that is simply to stop and restart the camera very quickly the frame or so loss is negligible to the overall production process 
and then you've got another 30 minutes. So if you're shooting with the single lens reflex, you have to remember that when you're coming up to your 30 minutes, you need to probably pick a moment where you can switch off and on the camera very quickly and do so. The XC10, the movie camera, does not have this limitation. It is a movie camera. So it will shoot for, for as long as the battery or the media will accommodate. Now with the XC10, you have about two hours life in the battery. The actual storage media, 64 um, gigabyte flash drive, will probably hold three to three and a half hours of footage. However, the battery will only last two. So you wanna you wanna make sure that uh, one, you either plug into power supply, or you are able to conserve footage, non-important footage, or uh, exclude non-important footage and save the battery and then turn it back on for uh, activities which you want to record. The next thing we'll do is look at the cure the lenses. The T6i has interchangeable lenses so you can rate, you can move from uh, the combo lens into a full telephoto lens into uh, uh, a dedicated telephoto lens. We've got the optical zoom lens This is a fully dedicated uh, telephoto lens. You need to be very careful with this lens because it is, is a very heavy lens. Its support is in this area and that's where the tripod goes. So the tripod supports the lens which would be way heavier than the camera and that keeps it stable. I mean a lens of this size which can be moved out into even a longer zoom this this can go up to um, 2600 all right 650 it starts at 650 and it goes up to to 1300 and when you put on the extender lens which which doubles the magnification um, that that changes from uh, 1300 to 36 to, to 2600 um, from 1300 to 2600 so it's, it's something for reaching out and touching a target which is far away um, items or footage such as the regatta yachting and stuff where you want to keep the camera safe on dry line and reach out to see and, and, and capture the the um, the ongoing action mainly for still photography it remember it is the, the greater the modification the more susceptible uh, the footage will be to vibration so you want to have a, a very quick shot still shot uh, i don't recommend it at all for for taking video footage this is a manual lens so it does not have the electronic camera stabilization built into it which is another downfall for taking video but but it's a very good tool to have in the toolkit for um, situations where you need to to really reach out and take and take maybe a still a still shot of, of, of the action of the ongoing action. The XC10, the video camera, has extremely good built-in uh, video stabilization. So you actually don't need to to do anything or add any additional uh, equipment to stabilize film shot with the XC10, the video camera. Uh, this is complemented if you attach the viewfinder converter, whereby this, this will be close onto your eye and your hands will be tucked in as normal for your normal photo um, photography position. And you have three points of stability, your arms, your left and your right arm, and your eyes so it's it's a pretty stable situation um, and you can then uh, proceed to to take your shots in the comfort that it will be fairly stable it will be handled electronically by the camera the 
So if a lens reflects also does have a uh, camera built-in camera stabilization on the combo lens and the, the Canon lenses that come with it. One of the Canon one of the intermediate Canon lenses, uh, a telephoto Canon lens does not have image stabilization. So one would need to be very careful with that or to actually use the beholder uh, handheld stabilizing gimbal. And I have it here. So this is a quick introduction, as I say, or an introduction to the equipment available to you. This is the um, beholder handheld three axis gyroscopic um, gimbal. And this will do a good job of stabilizing your camera it is obviously one must spend a great deal of time balancing the camera first you must balance the camera on this piece of equipment to make sure that it is um, it is, it is properly calibrated for vibrations on any axis and to try and keep the camera steady. This along with the lens stabilization in the um, SLR will give you a fairly steady film. Again, you wanna be able to, to move um, as gracefully as possible with the camera. It's still not going to compensate for any really extreme jerky motions. Uh, but it'll give you some some pretty nice smooth film if you have to be actually walking or running with the camera Now there also we also have a, a number of, of um, Manual Camera stabilizers um, there are actually two of them one more suited to the to the DSLR which is the T6i and the other more suited to the XC10, which is the um, the newer, brand name newer uh, camera stabilizer, and that comes with um, a support vest, so that uh, for for footage which is lengthy in nature, uh, the camera person does not have to be encumbered by moving around with the with the camera equipment now the xc10 is a fairly light camera it is actually i think lighter than the t6i which is a, a, a still camera basically a still camera uh with, with with video capability but experience has shown that over a long period of time um what the hands do become tired so the newer vest and camera stabilizer will do wonders in assisting you in shooting for long periods of time, um, especially when you have to be standing uh, in the open. Now we, we move on to the microphones that are in, in, in our toolkit. Um, of course, all the cameras come with their built-in uh, stereo microphones. This is being recorded with uh, a shotgun mic over on this side. Um, <clears throat> the and it's also being shot with two cameras. It's being shot with the with the T6i and the XC10. Uh, and we'll see we'll see how how that works out in terms of of the of the color grades between the two cameras. The the whole reason for sticking within the same product range is so that the lenses, the glass, will be the same and you don't get a lot of post-production um, requirements in, in terms of color grading and making the film look as though or, or making the film not be obvious that it was shot with two different cameras because something you know if you shoot with <coughs> excuse me if you shoot with a panasonic for instance or um some other brand nikon and and a canon or what I want once you use two different brands, you're gonna see a little difference in the way how the lenses interpret the color. So you want to keep these lenses as uniform as possible. 
the XC10 does not have an interchangeable lens. The lens cannot be changed, but it's a very, very, very good lens. Um, it goes from 24 to to um, 240, I think it is. Uh, so, and it's, it's a 10 by uh, zoom. So, I mean, we can see some footage shot with this from, from the Monk Studios um, down to town, down to the harbor. And you can see it's, it's crystal clear, really good. The other beauty about the XC10 is that it is a 4K capable camera. So you can shoot 4K, but you need um, some of these um, special cards to shoot to. And it has in the 64 gigabyte um, fast card. Uh, the fast card reader is also in the kit to transfer these fast card 4k videos onto the laptop and you need a, a, a piece of software to to be able to to read these cards and when we get into the software section we do deal a bit more with transferring footage from the various devices um, transferring the media from the various devices onto the laptop for post-production processing remember that should anything not be explained or you have any questions after we finish with this video google is a excellent source for actually googling the item and looking for a manual for it usually pdf or um youtube just hit the item search youtube with the item uh, followed by tutorial uh, a lot of people learn much better with the uh, video type instruction that actually going through a manual manuals tend to be very compl complex complicated hard to read and people usually don't stick them out i certainly don't read manuals very very well um i look at the salient points get a grasp a grasp of it and then i will probably go to youtube and uh look for a video tutorial which crystallizes everything Um, so we were actually talking about the mics before I kind of got sidetracked here um, you got your shotgun mic you got the built-in mics um, you got wireless mics lapel mic wireless lapel mics and I'll just show you some of these this is the the actual receiver that goes into the uh, camera um, the antenna hangs out below and this is a wireless mic for a lapel mic uh, lavanier mic and that goes onto your belt and through your shirt comes out here and um, we, we sort of use that to to get a really crisp um, <clears throat> audio input now audio is very important with with when you're doing video work the quality of the audio is very important and, and for those not within the company, just looking at this as a, as a quick tutorial for people who, who want to start video production and they, they wonder about the kind of equipment they have to get, um, you can start off with a phone. Uh, once you've got a, a, a fairly decent camera on your phone, uh, six megapixel and up, uh, you can probably uh, do some pretty, pretty good footage. It's all about your artistic capabilities and not necessarily the equipment you use. Yes, the equipment, comes into play when you're doing uh, commercial work um, and when you start to move up into the industry you need to graduate and, and purchase equipment like we did but we started off with a, a Galaxy a Samsung Galaxy tablet and um, obviously put some extra equipment on it uh, a high definition lens and um, some adapters which allowed us to to plug in XLR sources and stuff like that so that we could get some pretty good audio um, but you can start with some fairly basic equipment if you do want to invest in a separate audio recorder um, we use the, the Tascam recorder which is a, a separate recorder and this requires very very good quality um, stereo sound 
which you can then sync back with your video uh, using the, uh, the, the video audio sync, sync method of a clap or a clapper and uh, this will give you some pretty good audio if you're using uh, cameras that don't have a built-in good audio for mobility when you're, you're shooting um, on the go with either the DSLR or the uh, XC XC10 we can use um, this Movo shotgun mic there are many many brands uh, we are not particularly disposed to any put any specific brand we have not been contracted to promote any specific brand uh, we have a personal liking for Canon cameras and um, the equipment that will be compatible based on money for value and this is a uh, shotgun mic it also has at the bottom a, a built-in source which is very important um, this is this does not come with the with the with the mic it's a separate purchase this is um, a, 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 a mic mixer and this becomes very important when you're tapping from external sources if you're doing a show or if you are um, doing a presentation of some sort where there's a PA system and you want to tap into that PA system you may need to modify the input to your camera a lot of these PA systems will send out a signal which is too hot for the camera so that little device will break it down balance it up with your own internal camera if you want to sorry with your own internal um, mic if you want to or with the same mobile shotgun mic or with any other mic that is plugged into it so it allows two sources and the mixing between those two sources you can choose a, a single stereo source or you can have a left and right channel and mix them to compose your stereo in the post-production phase battery life is critical now when we get down into we do we do a lot of uh, live streaming for sports uh, we're, we're the simplest thing to do is to use uh, a high-end phone um, again we are disposed to the iPhones uh, we use the iPhone 4 as a B camera and the iPhone 10 as the primary roll camera uh, and they will transmit and stream live to um, Facebook going through our backend studio uh, software which allows switching between the two cameras and the insertion of ad rolls um, various notifications uh, lower one thirds uh, subtitles tightly uh, you know standby clips uh, in, in other words if you want to if you're shooting um, a piece of footage and you want to do a cutaway to a previously recorded um, interview with the athlete being filmed at the time you can do so you can do it in the, in the, in, in the corner and um, come up with a very professional type like broadcast uh, the quality of which you will see on the major networks and this can be done for a very reasonable cost most of the software is is monthly license and you get your monthly license and of course your your um, production fees your service fees are worked out to uh, absorb the cost of the software the production materials and the camera equipment and your time and everything so that 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 costing is always uh, is always a combination of factors which go into the final production I mean we just come up with the overall um, production figure which encompasses the post production and everything and that's your early rate and it works out to be about uh, 300 by bit it's 150 US per hour um, <clears throat> So you don't want to you don't want to be actually doing a shoot, uh, a peer shoot for any less than about three to four hundred Barbados dollars, which is one fifty to two hundred US dollars. If you don't get that, it doesn't make sense leaving home because you're you're not uh, unless it's a pro bono um, activity, you 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 you're operating at a loss at that point in time. Now that's your basic operational cost 
and then of course you gotta put in your overheads, your profit, this kind of stuff. So the commercial rates have actually been worked out and are on the website at www.pointcom.net. Um, and you can always refer to them and modify them as, as you see fit in your own particular territories. Uh, but that's that's basically what it is in Barbados dollars and you you can transfer that to Uganda shillings or um, the Eastern Caribbean currency or the US um, The prices on the website are stated in US um, So That that is a, a good guideline for you to to work yourself around, but you got to take into consideration your market uh, And what what is the standard? Uh, pricing in your market and if your market will support the pricing that the Barbados market will support. Um, so we back down now to batteries and uh, the cameras all have their own built-in battery system. The T6i has its uh, built-in uh, lithium battery which will last for about 40, 40 to 50 minutes or so. Um, I would be careful probably about 40 minutes I, I feel comfortable with there are three of them we just had to basically the, the, the 30 minute limit just came up on the DSLR which is which is the camera I'm focused on which is focused on me now um, so I actually had, had to, to, to I actually had to take a break I, I reset the camera uh, the XC10 obviously is rolling I can see I can see the red light on there and that'll, that'll roll as long as, as, we, as we have uh, storage capacity. I believe I have about an hour or so um, on that uh, flash drive left. It's got about three hours on it, but we've been playing with it before. And um, so it's, it's got about half an hour left now, based on, on the half an hour we've expended so far. But the battery backup. Uh, the battery in the T6i, uh, we have three of them. Uh, two are uh, generic batteries and one is a kind of battery. Now when you put a generic battery in a Canon camera, it will immediately come up with a warning. Does, do you see the Canon logo? And uh, you will say no. Do you still want to use this battery? And you will say yes. If you don't go through that process, it will not recognize the battery. And that is on the T6i. Um, the XC10 is, is new to the company, new to me. Uh, I'm not sure how that will work with uh, generic batteries, but uh, that has a DC capability so that we can actually plug a DC source in should we have to shoot longer than the um, two hours or so that's available on that battery. But that battery is a two hour battery, so it's, it's, it's pretty good. Um, in terms of the T6i, we also have the um, MCO Plus uh, vertical battery, and this this actually holds. If you open it, this actually holds two batteries on the inside, which are your two normal camera batteries. So you have twice the length there, and you would charge these batteries up normally in the chargers. And you know, basically speaking, the day before any shoot, you, sh you need at least 24 hours notice uh, for shoots because the day before any shoot is supposed to charge up all your equipment. The reason the day before is because the batteries do lose charge. So if you charge up a battery after shoot and put it down for um, you know a week or whatever before your next shoot, the battery may degrade a bit. So you shoot up, you you you. you um, top up your battery charge charge up your battery um, a day before the shoot so you need to get some notice on shoot so you, you need to insist that your clients uh, advise you and book your shoots online so that you can schedule your workflow um, <clears throat> this is a very cool piece of kit because it extends the battery life of the T6i and the real T6i is built is such that it's very difficult to change a battery once it's mounted on a tripod or something the tripod obstructs the battery compartment so it's good to have this that you you, you don't have to go back at it it should, it should give you at least an hour um, a juice before you have to, to think about anything 
that battery comes with um, a remote. No, I've labeled pretty much everything that could be confusing to a newcomer uh, to the company. Uh, this is the remote which goes along with the uh, battery pack which I just showed you and it allows you to control various uh, aspects of the camera. Again, you can go on YouTube or, um, or Google and look for the instruction manual for this and work it out. But most of these things are fairly intuitive once you're familiar with camera equipment. And obviously, if you come to, to the studios in Barbados for training, uh, we, we'll go through these things in, in, in more detail. But this is basically so that you can know what the equipment is, uh, what it looks like, what it does. <coughs> this is your XT power. It's an external battery. It can push out 9 volts or 12 volts. It will work with either the um, XC10 or the um, T6i. With the T6i, you will need to have this dummy battery adapter. Um, the dummy battery adapter will replace the battery. You actually remove the battery retention catch cover from the camera. It just pulls off very carefully. Um, the, the rule with camera equipment is if it isn't budging, don't force it. You know, if it isn't budging, it probably means you're doing something wrong. Um, for instance, when I first got the XC10, I was trying to change the um, the mode selection wheel and it, it wouldn't go. And then I realized you have to press the actual button in the middle of the uh, mode selection wheel for the, for the wheel to become disengaged and for you to be able to move it. So if it's stiff, if it doesn't feel right, don't force it because then you'll break something and that's going to be a very expensive breakage. But this, this um, XT power is about eight hours of juice. This is a very, very powerful battery. Um, it, as I said, will power both pieces of equipment. Of course, the adapter for the single lens uh, reflex camera <coughs> and one of the conversion plugs would be used along with the cabling that comes with this one of the conversion plugs would be used for the XC10 to go straight into DC power and that will allow that camera to run for a significant period of time certainly for the period of a shoot there are also some other battery backup batteries which are consumer type batteries um, you know basically for phones and stuff but they'll power the phones they'll power the tablets that, that one this one's pretty good um, this is a, a, a IM X and battery. This is a 10,000 milliamp um, one by one battery. And these connect USB uh, to the to the camera. I will supply them with uh, all sorts of extended power capabilities. Now, in the field many times, if you're streaming or if you're, you may need internet connectivity in the field. And we use these um, various types of, of nodes. There's one for every provider. This is a, um, this is an Ozone um, LTE uh, hotspot. Uh, we also have in the arsenal, We also have um, the a mobile Wi-Fi from Flow under the Flow uh, provider and an Alcatel um, Wi-Fi under the Digital provider. So the reason for that is that <coughs> various providers or the, the different providers have different areas of coverage. So you keep all three topped up. If one fails, um, the equipment should switch over to the other because the equipment is pre-logged into all three devices so that you can get your connectivity to the internet, to the um, production software, to, to each other, whatever. Uh, you have that con connectivity and 
in the case of the of the ozone setup um, where the, the phone is actually on ozone and the my phone is also on ozone we are hoping that it is seen as the same network so that we can communicate over much wider differences because the Wi-Fi communication and the Wi-Fi facilities between camera equipment right now is restricted to the same network, the same local area network. So you basically have to be in the same range. You have to be like within, you know, I guess 100 meters in the open at the most, uh, 50 meters indoors. Um, but obviously for some sports, we can cameras can be as much as as six seven kilometers apart so hopefully if um this ozone uh facility works out we will be able to connect cameras seven kilometers apart otherwise we continue looking for a solution for that and there's always a solution the whole thing about this industry is continuous research you just got to keep reading uh reading newsletters um read all the technology reviews and keep up to date with what's going on so you can find out what's happening. That's how we got where we are. Uh, a lot of research and um, a lot of, of um, reading on the various facilities available. Now we've already sort of touched on the remotes, but one thing I want to say about the remotes is when you're using that optical lens, that, that very long lens, the, the specialized telephoto lens that I showed you, even the shutter release will cause enough vibration to blur that footage and cause a problem. So with that, you always have to use the camera remote. You can either use uh, the, the, a wired remote or a wireless remote. You, you have choices. Um, you can use something like this, the, both the XC10, both, they're both cameras, both the XC10 and the T6i have wireless remote cameras of this nature and there are also other wireless remote cameras. But um, this is also a, a specialized piece of equipment called the case ear, and this will allow you not only to uh, remotely uh, activate the camera, do, a, do an exposure, whether it be a, a still or, or motion, but it also gives you um, access to features like focus, zoom, this kind of stuff. Um, so this is a, a very handy piece of kit if it's a, a one-man shoot or uh, one person on the uh, on the shoot but you're using two cameras so you could use this piece of equipment along with a piece of software that goes on the cell phone and control the other camera from your primary shoot position control the B camera in terms of of um the storage you'll see a number of these things knocking around this is a, a, a ssd hard drive one terabyte hard drive you're going to need very large Hard drives you're dealing with uh, video video storage, video processing, and if you're processing off the drive, you're going to need a very fast drive. So that's why we, we use solid state drives for processing. Uh, we also have ranging between one and two terabyte uh, standard drives, which we use for storage, backup, this kind of stuff. Um, the Now we'd mentioned uh, when you have to do shoots like obviously on the water, um, action shots that take you over water or in very bad conditions where it's raining and stuff like that. If it's raining, <coughs> if it's raining, you have a choice of exposing the camera to the elements, and this is a this is a camera case designed for the T6i and the camera goes into there. Tripod can go in through this part. Your hands go in through this part. And um, you control the camera from within here. The camera is protected from the elements. You can see what's going on. Um, the lens shoots from behind this uh, transparency here. And the camera, see if we've used this once for uh, a road event. Um, a little, a little fun run, uh, cystic fibrosis fun run, and it poured on that particular day. And we would not have been able to get the footage um, if we didn't have that piece of equipment. Um, <clears throat> so you want to always, you always want to protect your your equipment. It's very expensive. You don't want to drop it. You don't want to get it wet. And if it, if you think it's been compromised in any way with salt water or whatever, even sea spray, you might be taking. 
uh, some footage off the land that that um, you know uh, they see spray in the area and want to come home and one of these the test is to lick to lick the uh, the camera surface if you taste salt on it you need to you need to clean off that camera all right um, <clears throat> The what right now? Obviously, you need to you need to see yourself in a monitoring in a studio situation with the T six I. That's simple. You got a you got a, a very versatile swivel LCD attached that you can do you, that you can use from any angle. I'm looking straight at it now, so I can see that I'm, I'm in center frame and everything's fine. Uh, you can use an external one. Or with the XC10, which does not swivel in any other direction but up or down, <coughs> and you need to swivel out to the side to see. We can use then the um, the Canon XF utility to actually monitor what's going on on the XC10 from an external uh, computer monitor. So you see that your center frame and everything's fine. Um, Well, that's about it for the equipment. Let's let's go through very quickly. Um, we were talking about the, the cameras. I mean, sometimes you're, you're that's that's why sometimes you need a script. But this is this is an instructional thing. I have the equipment in front of me, so I will see if I forget anything. This is your GoPro. Um, the latest GoPro this is the GoPro Five. Um, very good camera, action camera, used for outside. Four K again. This is the new um, panel view 360 camera, which gives you a panoramic view 360. But that 360 uh, facility is only available on certain sites or with certain players. It'll work on YouTube, it'll work on Facebook. I'm not sure where else it works. So unless you're shooting for Facebook or YouTube, um, th this camera is kind of, you're gonna lose the effect of this camera. Um, Let's see what else we have here in, in our in our field kit. Um, of course, this is this is the other end of the of the lavalier mic. I showed you the receiver end. This is the transmit end. This is your standard um, seventy-five to three hundred Canon loom uh, uh, lens telephoto. At the end, something you can zoom in and out. It's obviously not as powerful as the optical, but um, it, it does a fairly good job. But when you're using this, you need to be on a tripod for sure. Um, you need to be fairly still. It does not do. It does not. It does not have built-in camera stabilization. So one has to be very careful with this. Again, uh, don't use this much for, for video. I use it for still. Um, if I'm gonna want to shoot out video at 10 by or whatever, I will go to the XC10 and do that. Uh, or I will go back to the combo lens for the, uh, for the T6i and use that uh, to shoot the video. Um, I think that's about it for the equipment. There are a number of obviously cables and um, various pieces of equipment, kit, the various bags and stuff for storing equipment safely in travel if you have to go overseas or if we have to even travel locally to to do a shoot, you want to protect that equipment um, in transit. Um, you always want to protect your lenses, make sure your lens is always covered. On the T6i, if you're changing a lens and you on, on rivet that lens from the um, from the camera body. You want to replace it with another lens as quickly as possible because it's amazing how quickly dust can get down into that onto that sensor and cause you some problems. All right, so you want to you want to keep these things. Um, you want to keep the exposure of your lens to minimum. And the lens itself, when it's detached, there is always a case cover for the front, a cover for the back, and they should always be on. You know, they should always be on. So basically, I think that that covers um, your basic hardware, the shooting equipment. Um, 
of course there's there's the teleprompter that Bishop mentioned earlier but we don't really use that for shoot of this nature because of the length of things that we have to go through and the this is an improvised um, lecture improvised presentation improvised tutorial um, where we speak about the items as they come to hand so scripting would, would not be feasible for a shoot of this nature uh, so that's it if there are, if there are any questions you can just shoot me a, a line um, or give me a call for staff members and um, so stay tuned for the next video which will be on the software and, and how we use the software um, to, to get the end result so thanks very much Thank you.